Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm so excited. I got Mary Rose Ramirez today. Mary Rose Ramirez is a conscious mind training coach who, uh, who coaches athletes for, uh, and also has a, a mind expansion program. She's helped uh, Sisterhood with Mind Expansion. She's an old mentor from a long time ago, and I've learned a lot from Mary Rose. Mary Rose and I share a, a love for Dr. Joe Dispenza, and I really wanted to have her on. She's been to many of Dr. Joe's retreats, and she, and I continue to learn from Mary Rose about a variety of things. I think she's a master manifester, master meditator. And so welcome to the Reality Revolution, Mary Rose. How's it going today? Well, thank you, Brian. I genuinely appreciate that and appreciate the introduction. And yeah, we have a passion for Dr. Joe, but I also believe we have a passion that we share and just wanting to continually expand and learn. Do, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm highly impressed on the amount of work that you have done to gain the amount of knowledge that you have gained. You know, I started to watch your uh, channel when I first started on this journey and I start listening, I start listening and, and I'm learning, I'm growing through it because there's so many different avenues to wherever everybody's ventured to, which is pretty much the same place, but there's many ways to get there. Right. And you provide uh, to your audience an opportunity for people to learn about avenues maybe they never thought of. So you're opening a lot of doors for people. So I think that's pretty awesome. Well, thank you. So, um, I, I, and you had mentioned um, going all the way back that you taught me in, in, in public, in, uh, in uh, <laughs> PE in high school. So okay, I remember, I remember you, but I just don't remember if you were in my class. So you might've um, given me some hints and suggestions all the way back. Is that right? Yeah, we could go all the way back when, right. um, <laughs> Again, you know, on Facebook, it connects everybody. Right, yeah. And I'm like, he was one of my former students. Brian was one of my former That's students. Crazy. And again, I thought I would always remember all of my students, and I don't, but I remember yeah. faces. Um, right. And it was in my early years. So we're talking, you know, just a few years back. <laughs> we're talking a long time ago when that journey started. And, and as I taught, I only taught PE for a few years. Then I created my own strength program, strength and fitness program. And I taught strength and fitness for what, 18, 17 years, and then I was um, asked to, wasn't asked, was put in a position where they wanted me to teach health. And like everything else, I kind of fought it for a little bit, kind of like everything happens to you for you. Um, and then I just made a decision, he said, and, and I taught it pretty much the same way I taught my strength and fitness class, because it was basically an empowerment program mm -hmm. and I don't know where this came from when you start thinking about evolution and expansion it just came from within and when my kids would show up to class you know the first day most teachers are taking role and they're finding giving you the rules and I kind of just threw the rules out I never even used a book for health but in my strength class and my health classes the first thing I would ask kids is who are you and mm -hmm. they're just kind of looking at me going what what <laughs> uh, I'm like who are you and why right. did you take this class? And so we started on a dialogue like that, and then I would ask them what they want. And the thing that was so fascinating is most kids didn't know what they want, like a lot of adults don't know what they want, but they can sure tell you what they don't want. Right. And then you learn about the Abraham teachings and going, well, if you focus on what you don't want, you're gonna track what you don't want. Right. <laughs> and so I would just shift it, and uh, from there, that's just how we started each semester of school. And I did that for years and years yeah. and evolved from it. And it was a phenomenal class because it was taking the holistic of the person. It wasn't just about strength training. We did yoga. We didn't, well, we called it mind training back then, <laughs> meditation. We did nutrition. And I really believed in my heart that I was providing an environment for the kids to I, grow and expand into something they can utilize. It's yeah. missing in a lot of, of that, and, and, and it's great that we, you started to introduce that. So yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about your spiritual journey. Um, yeah. <laughs> you had some crazy stuff from your past that has led you to the point that you're at now. Um, yes. Even before you um, accessed Dr. Joe's teachings, you were able to heal yourself. I wanted to hear your story about that. Most definitely. Um, I've also learned, though, in that process, too, that if you can cause your own health challenge, which I believe everybody does, that you can also heal it. And mm -hmm. when I look back with the quote, the diagnosis that the allopathic world gave my body was lupus. Um, and so my body was basically just in balance. But my question was, where did those imbalances come from? Well, I was in a very stressed situation at the time, toxic relationships, uh, just stressed at school, coaching, everything. It was, I was just basically overwhelmed. And 
I believe it was the body's way of saying, hey, pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to me. Um, you're getting further and further, further away from who you are. And so uh, Matthias, where I was just listening to on initiation, which is another mind blowing app. Yeah. Just when you think you have things figured out, then that comes in. Right. But one of the things he shared about was the duality of the darkness and the light. And he said, mm -hmm. if you start to walk away from the light, when you start moving more and more into the light, the darkness is a shadow that becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. bigger. And bigger. He goes, it's unhealthy to just have one or the other. You need them both. Mm -hmm. And so I look at that part as the darkness pulling me back. He says, because as you're walking here, you're getting further and further and further away from who you genuinely are. Right. Because you cannot just be here or here. There's that duality. And so the health challenge came at a time in my life where I believe I was probably moving a little bit further away from who I was. And mm -hmm. the universe has a way to knock you down to say, hey, let's get you back in alignment. And so this was before I knew Dr. Joe. You, I, I understood through the allopathic world that they wanted me to do prednisone. And, and that was their solution. And, and of course, their thoughts were, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. And there was just something instinctively in me that felt that I could heal my body. I knew that mm -hmm. we had the innate ability to heal ourselves. But now with Dr. Joe's work, I understand, I understand a lot more about my life now mm -hmm. than I did then. But now I understand that if you can stay in alignment and get yourself in alignment, you can download information from the field to communicate to your cells so your cells know what to do, so your body knows how to heal itself and get it back in balance. Mm -hmm. And so um, I chose a different route. I chose a, a, a naturopathic route. I found a product... Um, a glyconutrient that I researched, I studied, and I said, well, this makes sense to me, because that was a question I always asked. Prednisone right. didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to put something toxic in my body if my body was already out of balance. And then I was introduced to my biochemist, Jim Rubino, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. And in five minutes, he just looked at me. He looked at my symptoms. I had like 33, 34 symptoms. Thank goodness I wrote them down. And he just shared, he goes, you have mercury toxicity. And he goes, let's see what organs it affected. So we went through the test and did all that. He gave me, you know, plant medicine. Um, and I look back now, it took about three years to get my body back in balance. Mm -hmm. But I also shifted at that emotional level. I started to meditate because mm -hmm. I continually heard that word continually came to me. Meditate, mm -hmm. meditate. Until Dr. Joe's work <laughs> of the decades of meditating, I never really understood the physiology and the biology of what was really going on in my body when you're actually meditating. Mm -hmm. um, and so through that process, and I started to journal and I started to open up and I started to read, you know, Ianla Van Zant and Marianne Williamson and Wayne Dyer and, and all these spiritual gurus out there is I started to change the energy in which I was existing in. Mm -hmm. And that's one of Dr. Joe's big, big lessons is when we do these healing sessions, we don't focus on the person. We focus on the field of the energy the of field. where that disease exists because mm -hmm. the field governs the particle. Right. And if you can change the field, then you can change the particle. So you can change. You don't have to change the person. You change the field. The field mm -hmm. changes. And so when I look back at what I did, that's pretty much what I did. I just I, I took myself out of the stressful environment. I put myself in a more calm environment. I put all the plant medicine in my body. Um, I researched, I rested a lot. I took care of me um, for once in my life. Cause usually as you coach and you teach, you're constantly giving, giving, giving. Mm -hmm. And which I, I mean, it was a gift. It was a gift to, to share as much as I shared with my athletes and with my students. But I look back hindsight now and I said, did my body heal because I took this product and because I worked with my biochemist or did my body heal because my belief system was so strong that I knew it would? Right. And, and it did. It took three years, system. but it was, I'm back in balance. So, so and that so was a long time ago. Once you discovered Dr. Joe, and mm -hmm. um, I'm, I just have huge passion and love for Dr. Joe. I know, he, I know. changed my life. Uh, and people know, they've, they've seen similarities in my, in my meditations. I fully admit it, you know, because what he does works. And it so does. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use what works. Uh, you've been to... Uh, how many different um i've been to about seven of these events seven of these events right and these go all day long these go oh, all these are 
you know, his advanced follow-up, his, his last advanced follow-up was just almost two years ago that I went to in Amelia Islands. We started at 11 p.m. and we finished every morning with a walking meditation as the sun was rising. So you, and so, you want you in, the, in that field of when you're kind of sleepy a little bit. Correct. Teaching you because that. you're working to change those brain waves. You're right. working. So he calls it pop is when, you're, when your brain waves hit gamma. And when your games hit waves hit gamma, that's when you're in the field. And when you're in the field, that's when you're able to download all of this information and right. go to the other dimensions and become everybody, everyone, everything. But the greatness of, of Dr. Joe is that he measures everything. Right. And so he's measuring people. And this last one we went to in Niagara Falls, there was a guy there that was, what did he say, like 400, 500 above the standard deviation when his brain hit gamma. I mean, they've never seen this before. Right. It's just, it's, it's the phenomenal. wonderful thing that Dr. Joe is giving us is feedback, that neurofeedback that we really do need, that we've needed all along. Can you, can you explain when you've gone into gamma, can you explain what it feels like for you? For, for me, because every individual Were you able to do different. the feedback? Were you able to, to, did you know when you were going into gamma? Well, I was not one of the ones that was getting my brain scanned. Okay. Um, but there's many people that hit gamma without having their brain scanned, but mm -hmm. everything's different and you don't hit it every time. Like some right. people, they're ecstatic. They're ecstatic to where the best way from everybody that I've heard, the way that they explain it, they say it's an unconditional love that they've never felt in their entire lives, but it seems so natural. And okay. so for my example, I have a friend out in California and the first time he went, and I think the less that you know sometimes going into Dr. Joe, yeah, it's true. the easier it is to do <laughs> because right. you have no expectations. But he said that he, he's, he'd been married to his wife, Rebecca, for 25 years, and he said, what he experienced he goes i love my wife he goes i love her more than anything and he says but this love was a hundred times more powerful yeah and so that's one of the aspects of the feeling of just becoming one i mean you're everybody everything everyone the other things that i've experienced is i start to see geometric patterns geometric shapes right. you I, know I, fractal I, patterns right because as energy slows it slows into these fractal patterns before it becomes matter mm -hmm. and then i also felt myself in time going back going forward it just it was it's hard to explain oh i get um, it so so if i wanted to create a meditation based on what you've learned from being in these workshops and your own self that create gamma that the focus of this was we want to create a gamma state what would you do well when you want to create a, a gamma state the, the most important thing is is it's not well the meditation Meditation is a key. It's a key with the different vibrations, different level, right. but it's the person allowing themselves to get beyond themselves. The person to move from that alpha state of wanting to control, wanting to, to releasing and surrendering. And I think that's the most challenging part that people have in any type of meditation right. is the ability to just surrender because until you can surrender, you're always going to have that struggle of right. your brain waves going in theta, alpha, beta. I think you know, that's what it, the void is helping. Uh, yes. What his concept of the void is helping you to surrender because we carry so much into our meditation that it yeah. just, whatever we carry into it is what's going to be. So if we could let go of all that stuff, right. it's hard. We are, we're human and we carry yeah. our histories and our baggage. Uh, so, and that's the big revelation with me, with Dr. Joe is if I can get, let go, that stuff go. Yeah. Then I can really, um, have a big impact when I have the, my meditation. Correct. It's, you know, the, the Buddhist monks will call it the monkey mind. <laughs> you right. know, I, I listen to a lot of Buddhist monks and, and they'll call all that busyness the monkey mind. And with Dr. Joe, it's, it's like anything else. It's a skill. And if people can understand that meditation is a skill, a skill. and then they learn, it's just like, like if I, te I teach volleyball. Yeah, I, was say, I, I taught volleyball. Right. Well, before you can actually pass that hit, and get a kill on the spike, you have to learn the fundamentals. And I think that's what Dr. Joe does so well is he brings the fundamentals back to remind people we're 99.999% energy and 0.0001% matter. And my question was always in my sisterhood classes is, then why do we focus 99.9% .9 of our time on the 0.001% right, and zero point, point you know? And, and so you've got to build those spiritual muscles as much as you spill, uh, build those physical muscles. Right. And meditation is a skill. And there's different 
ways to be able to achieve and to move and to think greater. That's one of the things Dr. Joe shares is, and I teach it to my athletes all the time is you've got to think greater than your current circumstances. You've got to think beyond that, but the body's so conditioned and addicted to certain emotions addicted. that it always wants to go back to what it's used to. It's hard for people to understand that they, they can be addicted to negative emotions. Oh yeah. Oh, and and yeah. it's a big revelation that Dr. Joe really explains in very well in his book and in his sessions that yes. oh, we have the, we, we, why am I always feeling so depressed and terrible? Because mm -hmm. you're addicted to it. Yes. It's part of you that wants to have that response. And, and one of the things he shares, and, and we laugh because he, he's just, he's so genius, but he's so down to earth. Yeah. And he shares in there, he goes, well, if you're addicted to guilt or you're addicted to shame or you're addicted to anger, then you surround yourself with people who will validate that feeling right. for you. And so when you're talking to someone, if they share their story, like with sisterhood into life expansion, I'll share with, with my clients. I said, I'll allow you to share your story one time. And one time only. If it does not benefit you, if it's not helping you grow, we're going to release that story because people yes. want to go back into their story constantly. And that's what's keeping them at the cellular level feeling the way that they feel because they're vibrating that low energy. And then every time they repeat the story, it's just a continuous loop. Right. And so awareness is the first step of being able to get out of that loop. So he, I want to know a little bit more. He has like super long meditations beyond yeah. his recordings, like four yeah. or five hour meditation. Yeah. Tell me, I, I want to go like a, your reporter. And so you're reporting from the Re reality revolution. Like you're a field reporter. What's it uh -huh. like in these rooms when there's a five hour meditation that he's leading? There's something more that has to be happening. It's, it's a special thing, right? Well, the, the first thing that's happening is the energy of the room's changing. And how do we know? Because Dr. Joe measures it. Measures the energy of the room, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. He's measured the energy of the room. And it's interesting from the first day to the last day on the difference of the energy in the room. So, so that's one of the things that are happening. The other thing, when you're putting, you know, what do we have, 1,650 people in Niagara? Mm -hmm. When you have 1,650 people in one room, in the early day, in the early days, because it's a seven-day workshop, everyone's working to get past their old self. They're working to move beyond that. So right. the energy is probably not going to go up that high in the room because they're fighting to release the negativity or the emotions that are keeping them stuck. And so mm -hmm. you, you're, it's an internal battle. So you're thinking 1,650 people are having this internal battle all at the same time. Right. And then you have the different levels. You have highly skilled people who have done his work for a long time. You have other people that they want to leave after one or two days. No one ever does, but right. it's it just because it's so of amazing course. at the end. Hey, you're losing um, your addictions. Your addictions are oh, being yeah. broken, right? So you're going to yeah. want, I want to get my fix, right? Yes, most definitely. But as it goes on, when we go into like the pineal gland, which is usually Saturday, Sunday, uh, and it's a four hour one, it's a four hour mm -hmm. meditation. We start at 4 a.m. And the reasoning we start at 4 a.m. is the, the biology behind it. It's at its peak at four. And I mean, you can read his books, um, you know, Becoming Supernatural. That's, right. That'll explain. We don't have enough time to, to go into all of that. But everything that he does has a purpose to right. it. And by that time, the energy is so high, people have moved beyond themselves that people start to really pop right away. And that's what he calls hit and gamma, pop, boom. You'll hear noise. <laughs> Some people, it might freak them out a little bit. Right. And uh, because you're pushing all of that old energy that's stuck in those lower energy centers up through your heart, up and out. And when, it, when that energy moves from those lower energy centers up and out, it's like having a brain orgasm. That's what, that's the best way he right. can describe it. He that's, says you can move energy can down, right. yeah. yeah. But he goes, but you also move energy up, and so there are people who will. Uh, you'll hear screams, you'll hear noises, you'll hear, and and people may be unaware that they're even doing it. And then sometimes, I mean, every time it's so different, but you can actually sense and feel the shift of the energy in the room right. and the coherence. What's happening is as people start to move beyond themselves, their heart and their brains are becoming coherent. And when one person has a heart and brain coherence, we have these mirror neurons. So that person did it. So people start to think, well, I can do it. I can do it. And all of a sudden you're right. getting a group of 1,600 people, 1,650 people vibrating at that same frequency 
there's just like a calmness and a crispness wow. in that air. And when, when I was in Niagara Falls, you have the negative ions from the water of the falls. And okay. the first day, even before Dr. Joe started, uh, me and a couple of my other friends, we went there. We went under the water, actually under. They call it the Hurricane Alley. <laughs> right. And I, I, I promise for the rest of the day, I was like, I felt like I was this 10 year old kid because I had so much energy and I was happy and I was just go lucky for the entire rest of the day. Right. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, that's a highly elevated emotion, which is one of the things Dr. Joe focuses on is you've got to have pure, pure intention, you know, a clear, clear, clear intention and a highly, highly, highly emotion that's just going to take you that's exactly right. what i felt and so again the environment starts to change again dr joe's not changing any of us right. what's shifting is the energy in the environment and when that changes we are in another environment having a different experience right it's, i mean going away from that it's like how do i go back to the real world a little bit <laughs> That's why he has created, you know, there, he has a private Facebook page and uh, for people that have attended his advanced and Dr. Joe's so great that like he had yesterday, he had to, every month he'll come on or after every advance, mm -hmm. he'll come on um, just to share and to remind us, he says, because the, the tough part is when you leave and, and he calls his place, the monastery, when you mm -hmm. leave the monastery, it's, you go back into this 3d dimensional world that we live in. Right. You know, it's kind of like you have one foot in the fifth dimension and one in the third, but we do live in the third, we're humans. And so the focus of, of what he does there is to remind us, to keep us connected, to have these connections. And uh, meditation is one of the, the best ways to continually um, start moving and growing and expanding. And so he does give you support once you leave. Um, that's um, it's I'm amazing so, it's amazing so thank you for telling us a little bit more about it yeah. and so i would recommend anybody to go to dr joe's events i i can't say enough about him um but yeah. i wanted to there's reports that light workers are showing up at these events yes so i want to know <laughs> i knew uh, that question was going to come of course so yeah um, and dr joe acknowledges it in one of his videos oh, yeah. so i i want to know more tell me about the light workers the light workers, he calls them beings. Um, right. And not everybody sees them, but he definitely sees them. He sees and them. And people that are start, people are starting to give testimonials of when we do these healing sessions that actually these beings are showing up and helping them heal. And so if you go back, you can find some of his testimonials. There's this gal who had some knee issues, some other issues, and uh, these beings, and they talk to you, obviously, telepathically. It's not like you're talking because right. when you're doing the healing session the person that's being the healy they're just there they're laying they're releasing they're surrendering right. and the beings talking to her and she said she remembers him like shifting him her it shifting her knee and, and she's just like you know that hurts and he's just smiling yeah it hurts we know but being able to heal she goes and then she comes out of this session and everything that was bothering her no longer bothers her. So have and you so I, witnessed the, the light workers yourself? I, I've seen I've seen shadows. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're the light workers. I don't know if they're the right. ones Dr. Joe sees, but I have seen shadows. But I've seen shadows outside of right. Dr. Joe's. I know too. that you see energies yeah. all the time anyway. So yeah. So we'll get to that in a minute. Right. Um but a lot of people I think it's more a lot of people will feel. And, and I'll mm -hmm. share an experience I had when, well, I've had a lot of experiences in his seminars where we do, we do, uh, my hands are here and all of a sudden they're up and I'm not moving them. They're going they're, up. They're just, and then all of a sudden my legs are going up and it's not me. I'm just, I'm like, who's doing that? What, what's going on? <laughs> or maybe it's my higher self. Right. Um, but we were doing a healing session and this one was I, maybe a year ago, two years ago. And there's a time when Dr. Joe will bring us, um, bring us all back and time to release and the, and the session be, starts, to, starts to end. And I have, you have your hands in the field. Again, we're changing the energy of fields, not right. the person, the energy of the field. And I attempted to pull my hands away. I could not physically pull my hands away. It wow. was like this magnetic force. And I'm like, like right now, just like, and it wasn't a negative feeling. It's just, I couldn't pull it. And it was like, okay, obviously I'm not done with this. 
And every okay. time I would try to pull, I could pull a few inches, but there was such a bond of energy that had me connected in this field. And wow. then eventually after a while, you know, I released it and I'm going, what, well, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Amazing. Uh, yeah. That is incredible. So, so, yeah. Oh, so, um, and the really cool thing about Mary Rose, if anybody um, check out her Facebook page or um, I don't know if you're on Twitter or you're on Instagram, right? You I'm on Instagram. I have a Facebook. I actually have a sisterhood into life expansion right. Facebook page. I haven't used it a whole lot. But again, that, that's all the stuff that I'm going to start right. going back to. But the cool thing is that you've chosen, you're doing what a lot of people that are listening to this have a dream of doing. Yeah. And that is, okay, I, I want I want to really seek out uh, and, and in my own spiritual journey, I want to leave the house and I don't know where I'm going to go and I'm going to decide on a daily basis what's going to happen. And you've chosen right now, you're on a journey that is really incredible that I want to share with everybody. Um, you, you left Cheyenne and you are on this journey and you didn't know where you were going to go. Next thing you know, you end up in a town, something happens, you're following your instincts and your heart on a daily basis. Yes. And so you're, uh, you're experiencing, um, some incredible things. Tell us a little bit more about your journey right now. Yeah, the, the journey has been absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what I shared with when I when I made the decision to do this, the main reason was, you know, my mom transitioned about six years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she would always share with me, because again, I want to share, I'll, I'll put the pieces of the puzzle together. Abraham always says words don't teach. And not Abraham biblical, Abraham Hicks for those who follow Abraham. Right. Experience teaches. Mm -hmm. And so I have all this knowledge. Like you have all this incredible knowledge. Right. But my mom said to me one day, she said, so when are you going to start applying that? Right. And I'll always remember that going, well, I was applying it through teaching, through doing other things. But when am I really going to put it to test? When am I really going to start applying it? So I said, you know what? I've studied Dr. Joe for six years. I feel like I have a master's degree in Dr. Joe Dispenza. And he mm -hmm. always shares about living in the unknown. And I said, I'm going to get my car, taking my dog, and we are going to go. And we, the, only, the only commitment I had was my advanced in Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I had no intention on where I was going. It was just going to go with the flow and to trust the process. And as I've gone through the journey, this is what, month five now, month six, I'm, I've lost track. I honestly believe that I'm just along for the ride. I am not guiding. There's some universal force guiding me yeah. to where You've been I don't have to country. do a whole lot of work. Yeah. The, the, the things are coming to me and I'm led to different places. So the synchronicities have been phenomenal. It started from the first time like as soon as I left, it was like, okay, I don't, I, I do not understand this yet. Perhaps maybe you can help me. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I left, I would go someplace and I would see somebody and it would remind me of someone from back home. And I'd see that person. I'm like, well, that looks just like my friend, or that looks just like this person. And ev this happened for the first three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, am I just in a different dimension, but very close or and I, I played with it. it. It was a lot of fun. Well, right. when I was in New Jersey, I had to drop off Bella before I went to uh, Dr. Joe. My friend and I, my friend Margo and her daughter, we went to the beach and we're mm -hmm. at the beach and there's maybe, you know, 10, 11 people. Um, it was a weekday and a little windy, but we just went to the beach. Bella's first time experienced the beach. Bella's my dog, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Bella's awesome. You got to check and, out um, Bella. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, as we were leaving, because the times changed, we were going to stay, we were going to leave earlier, but then Margo changed her a time of her daughter's appointment. So we, we stayed another hour. And as we were walking away, there was another gal that I noticed there because she was in her chair. I was aware of her and she was reading a book and we just happened to leave at the same time. And I'm headed toward the bathroom. She's headed towards the bathroom. And then of course, Bella jumps and she goes and says hi to these kids. And I just turned to this gal and she goes, she just looks at me and she said, so it's your dog's first time in the ocean. I said, yeah, she goes, I heard. And she said, so you're, where are you from? And I said, we're from Wyoming. So long story short, she asked what my intentions were, where I was going to go next. And I said, well, the only plan I have right now is uh, a Dr. Joe Dispensa workshop. And her mouth was like, Dr. Joe. And this was her, she went, 
And I'm like, you know, Dr. Joe, and she's, she loves him. She's a therapist and she absolutely mm -hmm. loves his work. She hasn't been to one of his seminars. You guys get to his seminars, although they sell out in five minutes. Um, and so just to be connected to somebody else, again, what are the odds of someone being there that knows right. Dr. Joe? Well, he's getting so big now. So then we go to Dr. Joe. When I was leaving, everyone's like, you got to stop at Letchworth Park. It's a park in Upper State, New York. So I stopped in beautiful waterfalls, beautiful, beautiful. There's the, a song called The Sound of Silence, which I'm sure many right. people are of aware of. And that's for a different time, but that song just hit me. And I'm like, a lot of people think it's a very dark song, but the darkness is the void. And the void is where you download information. Right. And so it says, hello, my old friend, I've come to see with you. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I'm like, darkness, my old friend, I come to talk to you again. That's me meditating, going into the <laughs> void to download. So anyway, I interpreted this whole song into uh, the formula, what Dr. Joe calls the formula. And then I'm leaving and we're going to, I'm going through this tiny town called Morristown, New York. Never been there, but there's this huge mural huge on like a huge building and it was so colorful so diverse i said i gotta stop to see this mm -hmm. and so i stopped and i took pictures and then i start to break it down in sections and there's a section there's a flag here there was a group of there was a, a a group of people with a white face a brown face a black face then we had the eagle over here and then i noticed this quote right in the middle and it said the spirit of morristown always brings me back and then it was signed Mary Rose. <laughs> and it, it st I stopped dead in my tracks. Oh, wow. going, what? I mean, I have a picture. I have pictures of all of this. And as right. I looked at that, definitely in awe, which is a sign from obviously connected to the universe. Uh, Chrysler 300 drew, drew, uh, drove by and my mom drove Chrysler 300s. I see them all right. the time. And I'm like, okay, this is a small town. I cannot believe that that's my name even though I didn't do that. So I went through this town and there was a memorial for um, all the different servicemen. So I stopped there. And as soon as I stopped there, I'm like, I have been here before. It was like deja vu the whole time. Right. I had not Maybe been there. A past incarnation. Something, but right. the energy was just so crazy. And so that was an amazing synchronicity. Um, Which you never would have experienced without just going on this journey. No, right, yeah. not any of these synchronicities that I right. would have ever experienced. So the last one, and I, and I put it on a video on Facebook, I'll, I'll attempt to shorten it because it was just so amazing. I never had any intention on going to Gainesville. I thought I'd be in Florida for, what, two weeks? I've been here, what, two months? <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, I was heading to the Panhandle, connected with a gal, and she says, you can come to Gainesville if you'd like, and, and I'll host you. And I said, well, it's on the way to the Panhandle, might as well. Gaines, Gainesville's beautiful. It's, it's mm -hmm. a different type of, of Florida, but it's absolutely beautiful. And we were talking, and she said, she was asking about Sedona and my travels. I said, well, I, I've been to Sedona. I plan to go there on this travel again. And I said, there's a lot of vortexes in Sedona. And as soon as I said that, she had the TV muted. She unmuted the TV, and the gal on the TV said, these are her exact words, there are vortexes in Sedona. <laughs> and, and she just looked at me and I said, eh, just get used to it. It happens all the time. So then we took Bella for a walk and she said, have you ever read the book Untethered Souls? And I'm like, Untethered Souls. I said, I heard of it. I know that the author was on Oprah. And right. I said, I may have read it, but it would have been a while ago. And I could not remember the author. She couldn't remember the author. So then I get back. I decided I wanted to spend some time in Florida. I just wanted to go somewhere and be since we've been traveling so much. And my other friend Estelle got a hold of me and said, I know some people, let me see what I can do. Anyway, she gets me in contact with another genius. We call them geniuses with Dr. Joe. And she said, you're in Gainesville? And I said, yes. And she said, have you seen uh, Mickey Singer? I'm like, uh, she's, she's texting me all this. I'm like, Mickey Singer, who's Mickey Singer? Have you been to the temple of the universe? What's the temple of the universe? And I'm like, um, no, but I will check it out. So I Googled it. First thing that shows up is the book, Untethered Souls. Right. The author of the book is Michael Singer, right. which she calls Mickey. And I'm like, okay. And I showed that to my friend, Kim. I'm like, 
there's the author. Well, they were having a yoga session and he was going to talk that night and it was only, it's in Alachua, which is maybe 15 minutes from Gainesville. So I said, I'm going. So I go, it's dark. I got a little lost. I stop, I turn, there's a house because it's in a forest area. There is like nothing out there. You are literally in like a forest area. And there's this big house, get out of my car, go to the back door, knock. There's a guy on the phone. And I said, do you happen to know where the temple of the universe is? I said, I'm lost. And he goes, oh, you just passed. It's right down that way. And so he gave me directions three or four times. He goes, listen, I'm leaving in about five minutes. If you wait, you can just follow me. I'm passing it. And I said, well, I surely appreciate it. Thank you. And then I started to turn to walk away. But then I turned back and I said, thank you again. My name's Mary Rose. Well, he didn't offer his name. Right. And so I was like, hmm. So then I said, and what is your name? And he says, I'm Mickey. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so it's he, Mickey Singa, the author that was speaking that night of Untethered Souls, who was on Oprah. I'm like, here's this girl from Cheyenne, Wyoming on this journey who wasn't supposed wow. to go to Gainesville, who ends up in Alachua in the forest on the author of Untethered Souls Back Porch. W what are the odds? And so <laughs> what do you think now that you've had a bunch of this, what do you think it means? Um, you know, I think in some cases people read too much. I mean, you can start getting coincidences all the time. The mind yeah. starts looking for them. And the mind can find ones that were always there all along. Mm -hmm. And once we kind of program it, what do you think, how do we deal with these signs and coincidences when you're on your path? Because I think I've met people that have That's a made great question. too big of a deal about it. Yeah. yeah. And they've got, just they're, they're on a great path and they get distracted. Oh, I saw the 1111 over here, so I got to do this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, hey, I, I just, um, I think it's a question that can't, there's no actual answer, but I want to know your perspective. How do you deal with all these coincidences? Is it God winking at you? Is it just God winking at you or do we need to take it seriously and follow these signs? What do you mean? That is such a great question. It's a great question. And one of the things from my perspective, you know, there's everybody has a different perspective is it's just a reminder to me that I'm in contact with the universe, with God, whichever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, collective consciousness. I mean, everyone has such a different name. And as a reminder that, we're all part of this collective consciousness and that I'm on the right track. I don't, I get excited when they happen. I don't right. uh, dwell and, and look like, what is it? Three, 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 is it two, two, two? You know, that happens all the time. That's become mm -hmm. normal. That's, that's a normality to me. Anytime I see numbers, uh, you know, I'm on my way to where I am today because I'm helping a family out uh, on my way here. I saw four, four, fours. When I went to see my friend Kim um, in another Island in Florida, four four fours well four four fours are just angel numbers and to me the message was you're going to a place to help somebody heal or to help the energy of the person heal or the energy around them just to just to be able to brighten up a day or, or do that and so right. it, it to me it's kind of a language um and just a reminder of you're connected and keep right. moving and you're on the right path do you think something's happening now on this planet that it's yes. different than before? Do you think we're going through a revolution, a reality revolution of some kind? I, I believe that one, one of the things that Dr. Joe shares is there's always chaos before coherence. Mm -hmm. And this Matthias that I've been watching, who's 21 years young, who has knowledge from yes. thousands if and thousands of years. If anybody knows what she's talking, it's, it's called Initiation on Gaia. It's a really fantastic series. I plan on doing a couple of videos on it here soon. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It's mind blowing. Because like I said, once you think you have it figured out, pieces of the puzzle are together, all of a sudden, boom, this new piece comes in and it's like, okay, Dr. Joe gave me more clarity with Abraham. I can go back and listen to Abraham and go, okay, now I get it. Even it's more right. clear. Well, now with Matthias, I go back and I look at Dr. Joe's work and it gives me validation. Well, what mm -hmm. Dr. Joe's work and what it's doing is validating everything that he's sharing because one of the things he shares, the most important thing that we can do in this third dimensional world is to become coherent, to come become coherent with your heart and your brain, which is the mm -hmm. skills that Dr. Joe gives us. And I think more and more people are doing that. But what Dr. Joe will always share is there's chaos before coherence. There's always chaos before coherence. And so you look out in the world and a lot of people will say there's a lot of, there's a lot of chaos, mm -hmm. tons of chaos. There's this happening here and there's this happening here. And, and I attempt to stay away from the news, mm -hmm. but I believe it's just all the chaos before the coherence, before 
people are going to start to become more aligned before we start to become more peaceful before it's just the end i think of the chaos with the energy slowing down so that when it turns back into matter that we're going to be at a more coherent state that's my belief system right well there's definitely it feels to me like a battle between a group of people that really wants to focus on themselves and yeah. only the self and a group of people that really wants to focus on helping others and it feels yeah. like there's a tension there's there's two groups that are focused on helping others i don't know do you get what i'm talking about yeah i, I think that that it's again I, I would have not had this answer had i not been watched <laughs> mateus today but he talks about the dark and light you you have both mm -hmm. of them but one just being light is not it's they not balanced. Are needed. Right. You, you need both of them. Um, but I believe that it's the old kind of energy of the way things used to be. Of if you want things, you got to work harder, you got to fight harder. I said, well, have you realized yet that the more you fight against something, the more you create it? And I just think it's kind of the old ways of being slowly struggling to move out so that this new energy can come in. And one of the things that Matias said is the best thing that we can do also is to be coherent. It's just for you to do the work, for you to be at peace, for you mm -hmm. to make amends with, if, if you're in struggle with somebody or something, to become at peace with that because that's your contribution to help and shift that energy. Right. Well, the thing that Dr. Joe br brings to the discussion is uh, an understanding of quantum physics. Something yeah. you mentioned a little bit is seeing fractal patterns and yeah. it helps me to understand even old philosophers like Neville Goddard, uh, yeah. which is a more simplified way of teaching what, what, what jo Dr. Joe is teaching mm -hmm. uh, in, in many ways. So I, I do think we're coming into this realization that if, on a quantum level, there's this quantum field, like you mentioned. Yes. Um, and, and that's the big discovery. So how do you access the quantum field? and How do you change it? The, the skill, it, again, Dr. Joe would call it the formula, um, the skill of meditation, the skill of meditation of being able to move from that state of beta, moving beyond alpha to, into theta mm -hmm. and continually practicing to reach the state of gamma. Because once you're in that field, then that's when you connect, you know, if you can ignite that pineal gland. So when you're breathing before, again, I meditated for years breathing kundalini breathing i'm okay but what's happening in my body right. well it's all the old energy and and it's moving through you up into your brain and as you're moving it up into your brain that cerebral fluid that circulates in your system twice a day but if you meditate you can get it to circulate more and more, more, and more. which ignites that pineal gland which opens up the pineal gland which is the antenna into the field and mm -hmm. so there's crystals in there and there's water in there mm -hmm. and it starts to expand but it can only expand so much so then it comes back and it's back and forth now you got that toro field mm -hmm. and so, but once your pineal gland is it's the antenna into the field and so the main thing that i do is meditate meditate to get the pineal gland open or to keep it open so that I can connect to the field and be able to download information. Right. So like you said, um, how do you deal with, once you become so creatively powerful and you access this stuff, your thoughts become manifest much faster, but oh, yeah. it, you're accessing the news and outside influences. Um, I have to monitor and take diets from what I'm actually doing. So um, what do you, do you have any strategies for that from staying in that state is that the question well i mean do you, how do you deal with the news is really the, okay, the okay. basis how do we deal with all this <laughs> that's bad a, news that's a, that you know it's so easy to get sucked into yeah. that's that's a great question too i don't watch it <laughs> yeah. and if i do i limit it and it's one thing that i've noticed um the, because I've stayed in so many different places that there, there's a lot of people that get into, they get into the politics, they get into this, but I, I share with myself, I said, okay, during my existence, there've been a certain amount of presidents. And to me, it really didn't matter who was in office because my life was going to be what I was going to choose to create in my life. And so I took my power back and regardless of who's president, vice president, what's going on, 
I just have to find peace within me. And okay. if I find something, if I'm, if I'm watching TV and like, I haven't watched TV in the afternoon for, I don't know how long because mm -hmm. of, what's going on so i just choose to stay away it's it's like your energy flows your attention goes where your energy flows and so i don't want my energy to flow towards that i want my energy to flow towards something that's going to help me continue to expand to continue to grow to be of service to help to enjoy to mm -hmm. stay at that high higher vibrational right. um, state of being and so it. that's what i do so when you're on this journey it's harder to have like a daily ritual and have it you know so yeah, it is uh, uh, you, that's one thing that i would struggle with you know hey i, I yeah. want to get my daily meditation in uh you, so have you been able to, to integrate that into a chaos of constantly traveling all the time i have uh, the the because everybody's life's different and where i'm so number one i'm so grateful for all the people i've connected with especially all my family all my friends all the people that have allowed me and invited me into their homes mm -hmm. um and so i just work around the schedule so basically i get up at sometimes four in the morning <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, i'll do a meditation to stay in the room or late at night when everybody's gone to bed i make sure that i do at least one meditation a day what hasn't mm -hmm. been as consistent is i belong to two uh two healing groups uh, out of Dr. Joe's group. So I haven't mm -hmm. been able to partake as much um, in the non-local healings uh, mm -hmm. of it. So so explain that. You have a group that gets together and heals somebody. It doesn't There's, matter where you're at. You just uh, non-locally, you guys focus on healing somebody through the quantum we, field. Yes. Yes, we focus on, and there's quite a few group. There's a, there's a group here in the United States, and then there's also a group that I belong to in uh, the Europe area. And they're all students that have gone through Dr. Joe's advanced work. Mm -hmm. So there's a consistency in the teaching of how to change the field. Mm -hmm. And if you can change the field, because he'll ask the question, can you change the energy of a field non-locally. Well, yes, of course you can. Mm -hmm. And so once you have that understanding, it's like you said, once you understand the how and the why, the what or the what and the why, the how becomes easier. And so it doesn't matter, however, if you have 35 people or two people, mm -hmm. as long as you are working to get coherent in that heart and brain, you have the ability to change the field wherever. And so right. there are groups and, and, and all of it's from the kindness of everybody's heart. They want to be able to contribute. So there's a lot of people out there that have health challenges and they, um, they have, they know someone in the group or somebody in the group knows somebody that has a health challenge. I, in fact, both of my brothers, I had one brother who was really sick in the hospital last year. I had another mm -hmm. brother who had some serious issues that they didn't even know that we were doing a full uh, healing session for right. them and, and they both turn out great yeah my one my one brother left the hospital like a day later and my other brother his whole brain injury it, it's it's healed quite a bit um whether that was us i don't know but i would right. like to think that it contributed i, I just think somewhere. we're moving towards that there's i think global coherence the yes. more people that we're going to start seeing there's going to be a threshold that we reach where maybe it's a million meditators on a certain day where yeah. something's going to pop and there's and earth is going to go into its own gamma yes <laughs> do you get that, what i'm saying i agree yes i think we're we're getting yes. you know getting closer if we could organize it yes. uh, i definitely love to use my channel and other channels people watching out there we could organize some way to create global coherence yes. uh, you know that's what dr joe is doing a little bit at the end of his yes. retreats he has a global oh yes um, have you um, studied Greg Braden at all? I love Greg Braden, big fan. Okay, um, so Greg Braden, I used a lot of his work in, in the, one of my sisterhood courses. Again, it's, it's a six-week course, but it's, I never know who's going to show up. The energy that shows up is who shows up, so it always changes. Right. And we were talking about being able to change the energy. And um, he said, I believe it's 0. 0.001%. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go back. I'm not sure on that. So don't quote me on that, but of a population to change a field. And so we figured it out for Cheyenne and it was like 12 people that we needed to change the entire energy of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Oh, wow. That it was mind blowing to me. Right. But again, those 12 people all have to work to get in coherence and it's a skill and it takes time. It, takes time. Well, it, it can take time, but right. because it's a skill. And so it, it's just fascinating 
it's fascinating to me when they do these great group coherence uh, sessions, what happens in the world globally. So, and, doc, and Greg Braden's done a lot of work on that. I, I, yeah, and I love it. So let's hypothetical of this. What do you think, if there's a planet out there that's fifth dimensional, what do you think it is? Is, is, it a, is it a bunch of energy beings that don't need to eat as much that are on a different, what, when we talk about, these are words that a lot of people in new age circles use, but right. a lot of times I don't think they know what they're talking about. So, hey, the earth <laughs> turns 5D and we turn into this new earth where we're five dimensional. What does that mean to you? What does that mean? The, the 5D dimensional, I would have had a, a different answer for you two days ago. Right. Because again, I just watched, Matthias, <laughs> um, his definition of being, and he calls it in, into the ninth dimension, mm -hmm. is you don't need a body. Right. And so it's all these souls. And so the higher dimensions you go, you don't have these emotions either. We have that in this 3D world. Right. And so the battles that we're fighting, because that's part of the process of this 3D world, mm -hmm. is to learn, to experience, to grow, then to transcend, is there's just alignment immediately so if i if i were to look at the fifth dimension where everything's in flow everybody's coherent they just automatically go there it, it, it's right they're just they're there and I so keep, i keep on thinking about this book i just read the case against okay. reality by donald hoffman and he's making the argument that we're, our bodies are just a very super limited reading of what's really happening in reality um, our eyes are taking in an energy, our nose is taking in an energy, our mouth is taking in an energy, sound is, it's just, we're just getting five little energies. There's like thousands of different energies in reality. We're in this little tiny, like almost computer in user interface, just going, th and just, just for our own survival, just detecting these little energies. And there's this whole other world out there that we're limited by in our human bodies that goes beyond anything that we can imagine you know maybe, uh, that's definitely a possibility right maybe we're just all like flowers that are about to to bud and they're just waiting for us to um blossom you know you yeah. get that feeling <laughs> it's it's I, again have you watched all of Mat matthias's series I'm, I'm about halfway through so okay. i've gotten to he's talked about where he's from and what what's happening on the planet yes. and the different dimensions and how the universe started so it's super Be fascinating I'm, I'm because the question that the question that you just asked he answers right and and like he said something today that was pretty profound is people other beings are just the higher being you become you're just a sphere like the sun is just a sphere right. and he says so they say that your soul you can see your soul through your eyes and he says most people think that you look and he goes no because they're spheres there's one sphere negative one sphere positive and then your third eye, which mm -hmm. is, you know, and so it just, you look at life so differently. And so the questions you just asked, I'd be fascinated to talk to you after you watch it because it does, right. it answers it. The, the thing that I mentioned to you what, that it reminded me of was the law of one. The law yes. of one is talking about us moving up into higher densities and that the whole earth, earth is going through this transition into higher densities. Uh, but it also is talking about service to self and that uh, a bunch of um, other interesting, I think they're consistent. There's the consistency. Um, it's just exciting to think that there's, ener there's entities watching us, waiting for us, you know, come on, get going. Yes. We're, you know, we're just like a school that's kind of blossoming and waiting for us to move to the next level. So Yeah. <laughs> the, the key to that, that many masters that I've studied and is everything's inward. You know, it, it's kind of like one of the right. things is people like science in the beginning, they're, they're still going outward. They're still looking at the stars, even though we're connected, but the stars and he, he goes, but everything's in you. And so you it's, it's going inward. Our, our soul is a much larger version of, we're just a tiny little part of it. It's not inward. It's, it's imagine if you um, put, put your, your hand into some water and you saw fingers yes. and each of the fingers had its own awareness and they looked at each other and said, oh, that's another finger that's, that's similar to mine, but it's actually, the hand is actually an, an, an entire entity that's connected as one, right? And, and so that, right. that, I think, does that make sense? Do you think it's that? Yeah, I, all? I think the soul, the soul exists within and with, and outside and of us. Right. I just think, but, 
I'd have to double think that after again watching this series. I'm going to go right. back and I'll, up, you know, I'll watch it three or four times and go. Because here's the thing, and, and why I was so fascinated by it because it made sense. It made it. And anytime resonate. things yes, in life can it. start to make sense, because I have the foundation, which I think is a lot of people are missing that foundation mm -hmm. of let's just start here. Mm -hmm. Let, let's build a foundation. Let's build a strong foundation and then move everything from there. Right. Um, you know, he, he, he'll talk about the Trinity of your, your body and your soul and, right. and um, your spirit. But he'll, he'll say this. I have to think of this. The spirit creates the soul. The soul creates the body. It, it's, just, it's just fascinating. It'll it be is, fascinating it, it to fascinating. sit and... But do you feel like we're kind of just like our pets, like Bella? You know, you're training and teaching, taking care of. Bella doesn't really know what's going on when she looks at the ocean. She's, we're kind of like, we're just like that. And, and there might be entities that are taking care of us like pets that want us to move on and learn. And, and, and that's basically where we're at, right? Maybe? I, I think we're basically the only thing that really exists is consciousness. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. And so... But there's levels of consciousness. Yes. And that's what we're talking about. Different yeah. levels of consciousness. Yes. Um, and so there's other, it's, it's kind of like he was talking about, uh, Matthias was talking about these four stages you go through. And before you can transcend, you have to go through three other stages. And those who transcend is you die. And that's just transition. He goes, people think of it as such a bad thing, but it's not. Right. You continually transcend. He goes, but eventually you can transcend to where you don't need your physical body anymore. You have learned right. how to be pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then that's maybe when you become one of those beings, when you right. are just energy. It's just, it's all so fascinating to right. me. But do you think a long time ago we got stuck in these bodies? Like, yes. like, uh, and, oh. and you know, yeah. there, I have an episode called the wing makers and they have yeah. this idea that, you know many eons ago we were locked in we were already free energy like we're talking about yes Whereas, and then somehow something happened and we got stuck in our in our current incarnation cycle um yeah. almost like a little like maybe tricked and and now yes. we're working our way out of it so i mean and eternity is a long time right <laughs> it, it's you know you think about well time it's like Right. When Mateus is talking about going back 600,000 years ago, but maybe then it's just a blink of an eye. Right. But one, one you know, day could one, be 750,000 years. Right. There, you know, that's that I, I read somewhere that the, the, um, the sun and the earth and their galaxy goes around the center black hole. It takes about 700. And so maybe that's like the equivalent of a, of a year for them or something. It could you know, be, <laughs> it could be, right. You know, you asked the question on, 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 did we get stuck? And again, everything in my life I think just it happens for me it, it's just it's like I'm in the flow right now so I'm supposed to share this from watching the video <laughs> right, right. of Matthias but he said he said we're like a we, we're this consciousness that came and we started to build this web so we're like the spider mm -hmm. building the web he goes and all of a sudden we became a fly and we got stuck we and got we didn't stuck. know how to get out of that web and so he'll he'll share information on how to get out of it but again his whole thing aligned with dr joe everybody else i've studied is to become coherent to become right. coherent so but that's with all three levels that's with body mind and spirit right. so i can say that i'm a kind person but then if i go out and i yell at somebody i'm out of coherence right and so it's a continual internal work on oneself to master oneself. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's consistent with reality transurfing. Another popular yes. topic on my channel is the unifying the heart and mind is the key to achieving your dreams and goals and changing the outside world. It's all about that coherence. Yeah. And they yes. keep on coming back to it. I keep on hearing references. Of course, Greg Braden it talks mm -hmm. about it. It's so many different people. People don't understand what that means, but it really is. Dr. Joe is studying it on a scientific yeah. level. Yes. Coherence between the mind and, and, and heart. Yeah. Um, other philosophers are talking about it. When I say, I'm going with my heart, we know what that means, but there's more to it. And so it's interesting. I love how you, uh, you, you keep on bring, coming back to that. So yeah, uh, we could probably talk forever. We could talk forever. <laughs> we could probably talk forever. I just wanted everybody uh, to get a chance to meet Mary Rose and um, check out your, your what's, what's your Instagram? uh inspirational warrior inspirational warrior and you can and see then, 
Mary Rose's current journey. And Mary Rose Ramirez, you're on Facebook. and uh, Yeah, I'm on Facebook, Mary Rose Ramirez. But I also, uh-huh. you know, if, if people want to get in contact with me, because there's definitely, this is part of the process of to the next part of my life and what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, is that writing a book? Is that that's doing... What I wanna... That's what I was just going to say. Can you write a book about this journey that you've been on and what you've been on? Because I will definitely read it. I think there's a lot of people that are watching will definitely read it because you've experienced some stuff that we all want to hear. And and so please share it with us. Yeah. And that, and that's part of the the intention right now. And that's where I I feel like I'm being guided to with my higher self is to write. And then I I love teaching. I mean, just like, like I shared with you earlier, I never had a lesson plan. I just, because when I had a lesson plan, the time you had to have a lesson plan when you know you're being observed it just didn't flow you were teaching and so when i went heart, in right? yes you yes. just you just you're teaching you from flow your heart. right you just you flow and you go into it and so there will be a time on this journey where i know i'll just stop and just start writing right. or using a computer and and uh but i i do want to expand to with with my conscious mind training with athletes because i think it's so vital and when i look back um last story when I started uh, coaching I shared this with you I took over a team who maybe won three games the previous season Mm -hmm. and I'm walking in 20 something maybe a little arrogant a little cocky but it was a belief system that we're going to win state but I genuinely believed it I believed it right and the kids bought into it and we were 0-6 before we even won a match but end of the season we were two points away from being in the state championship match we ended up third and then I look back now and people are, how did you do it how did you do it and I always would just share because I didn't have an answer I would just share because I cared and because I think differently mm-hmm. but now I can go back after doing all of this work and go it's simple I just changed the field of energy that these kids walked into Mm-hmm. When they came to practice, it was a different field than previous years. And the field was organized. It was coherent. Mm-hmm. The field was structured. The, the field was, they knew the expectations. Um, and it was all surrounded with the foundation of love. I wanted these kids to right. be succeed. It was, and so I couldn't articulate that back then. Right. But, but there's going to be a, an NBA team or NFL team that's going to come along, I believe, and use conscious mind training like you're talking about. Oh, yes. Their training, and they're going to they're gonna win a championship. I believe that. that, that oh, yeah. Somebody's going to, like, we saw Phil Jackson doing I was going to say, Phil Jackson did Phil it Phil Jackson the was a perfect example. And everybody's, yes. why was Phil Jackson so good? He had the triangle yes. offense. No, no, no. He was teaching visualization and meditation and and. I believe that that was the reason for yes. constant success. Yes. And I think that there, as we're getting to this, I promise you, there's going to be some NBA team that's going to come along. They're going to start doing this. I think this, I've heard the Seahawks do it a little bit. Yes. I've heard that, but you know, I'm interested to see. And so, Hey, if there's an NBA team out there, contact Mary Rose. She might be able to help out. <laughs> That'd <so>. be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just wanted to thank you for coming on. I learned so thank much. Thank you. And thank you. Have fun on your journey. I'll be keeping an eye on your journey. So awesome. tell Bella I said hi. And then when you're I in will. California, you got to drop will definitely, by, all right? Definitely get in contact. Again, I appreciate it, Brian. I really think you're on to something great with mm-hmm. your program, your podcast. It's amazing. I thank learn from so it all the time, also. Thank all right. Well, well, welcome to the Reality Revolution. Dedicated to the spirits who believe life is meant to be magical. Get out, yes, really good meditation. And you discuss. It contains advanced viewpoints of the multidimensional human beings of the 21st century. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Sometimes you need to go back. We were able to visualize with exploring stuff that's fun to explore. I can tell. Unleash your potential. Some topics on how to change the subconscious mind and some interesting. I'm your host, Brian Scott.